Venezuela is counted among the top 10 most biodiverse nations on Earth. Its aquatic and terrestrial world stretches in the north of the waters, mangrove swamps, and beaches in the Caribbean Sea. In Langolong, a vast of network of biologically exuberant rivers, such as the Orinoco, westward to the Andes, and southward to the Amazonian tablelands and highlands wrapped in lush rainforest. Venezuela's biodiverse environment, from its area of the Amazon rainforest to its lakes and coastlines, has suffered increasing levels of pollution and degradation in the recent years. Venezuela's reliance on extractive practices, including mining and its aging oil industry, is one of the main drivers of the degradation of its environment. Given the attitude of the Maduro region, the situation is set to worsen. Venezuela is a country located on the Caribbean coast of South America. With the humanitarian emergency and most catastrophic political crisis of Latin American region, because the Venezuelan regime constantly violates human rights, its persecuted defenders, environmental activists, students, and journalists. This crisis has become a climate emergency, a consequence of oil spills repression against the indigenous people, political prisoners, environmental activists, human rights defenders, and situation of indigenous people in the border, Brazil border and Colombian border, and pollution from mining in the Venezuelan Amazon. Our objective is to expose that these circumstances that we are living go beyond an environmental crime only, but that the adjacent communities are being affected, the indigenous peoples are being affected. Everything translates into a systematic violation of economic, social and cultural rights. Um, during the last year we had the opportunity to participate in the hearing of indigenous peoples of Mercosur, exposing the precarious situation they are going through in Venezuela and we delivered a report to the Secretary General Luis Almagro at the Organization of American State as a part of the actions to demand the Venezuelan state the real protection and guarantee of human rights of Venezuela. In 2014, alarms were raised about the death of more than 4,000 Wayu children from hunger in the six years. Through a review of press articles, reports from international, national, and academic literature, and based on exploratory fieldwork, the relationship among three aspects of the Venezuelan crisis and the Wayu's access to food is identified and framed in the history of border dynamics. The strong dependence of the YU on Venezuela and their isolation from centralized Colombia policies partly explain how the shortage of basic consumer products, the reduction of remittance and the massive return of YU people to their ancestral territories in Colombia contribute to the food crisis that has been affecting these indigenous people in the last decade. Indigenous women and children are among the most affected. The Pan-American Health Organization has reported that the indigenous population living in the border areas of Venezuela are highly vulnerable to epidemic brown diseases. Indigenous people have been traditionally forgotten by the government authorities in Venezuela and condemned to live in poverty. During the humanitarian crisis, 
these have suffered further abuses due to mining activity and the violence occurring in their territories. The Venezuelan regime has also endangered the country's natural heritage through its mining policies. In 2016, President Nicolás Maduro approved the creation of the Orinoco Mining Arc, a wide swath of land accounting for around 12% of Venezuelan's territory, along the Orinoco River. This decision has put Venezuela's territory of the Amazon rainforest at risk with the Environmental Advocacy Group of SOS Orinoco warning that between the years 2000 and 2020, approximately 780,000 hectares of forests have been lost in the mining arc region. In addition, illegal mining operations have expanded ostensibly protected national parks across Venezuela, such as Japacana, Canaima, many of which are in around the mining arc. Venezuela is facing one of the worst and most critical environmental crises the world has ever seen over the last few decades. Even though it might be tempting to leave politics and all conflict aside, both the climate and the environmental crisis are political crises, and we should act in consequence to solve them. That is exactly the reason why we should address this problem within the human rights framework. Illegal mining is a billion dollar industry in the Venezuelan Amazon. Oil spills have been registered at a catastrophic rate on the coastline. And we shall not forget that such acts have forced native populations to flee from their historic territories. Settlements have been destroyed and many of their members have been tortured and killed. Venezuelans are dying without affordable energy, drinkable water and food. In order to understand the climate crisis in Venezuela, as in many other countries, the human rights crisis has to be considered beforehand. For approximately two years, we have been promoting from the Center for Activism and Democratic Development the climate strikes in Venezuela, joining the global initiative Fridays for Future. Our objective during this time has been to make visible the environmental crimes committed by the Venezuelan government, um, calling on the international community. The last two years, we have been reported to uh, international human rights organizations, the oil spills that occurred in the center of the country, in the state of Carabobo, also with the situation of the oil industry in the state of Zulia, uh, in the western part of the country. And we have been documenting and denouncing the serious crisis we are going through to the illegal meaning, exploitation in the Arco Minero, in the eastern part of Venezuela. With millions unable to access basic healthcare and adequate nutrition, limited access to safe water in homes and healthcare centers has contributed to the spread of COVID-19. In September, a fact-finding mission appointed by the United Nations Human Rights Council (HRC) found high-level authorities responsible for the atrocities that they believe amounted to the crimes against humanity. The government of Nicolás Maduro and its security forces are responsible for extrajudicial executions in short-term forced disappearance and have jail opponents, prosecuted civilians in military courts, tortured detainees and cracked down on protesters. Yes, the situation is catastrophic. The humanitarian situation in the country is very much related to the right of indigenous people and environmental rights in the southern Orinoco. Uh, this is the Venezuelan Amazon. Over the last few years, we've been denouncing the atrocities committed by the Venezuelan administration, their security forces, and various of their official agencies against the environment and against human rights of the very vulnerable Venezuelan citizens. On this path, a lot of different actors have participated and supported our work, namely university students, civil society representatives, Congress representatives from different countries all around Latin America. Human rights activists, journalists, lawyers, scholars, and so on have been part of our work. We have all been motivated by the hard but noble goal of fighting against this environmental crisis and this climate emergency that's taking place in Venezuela. To get this done, protecting and defending human rights has been a must in our mission. To do so, on one hand, we have participated in the OAS uh, General Assembly, having met with the Organization of American States Secretary General Luis Almagro on many occasions. We regularly host meetings with congressional leaders from Venezuela and the rest of the region, as well as working sessions with diplomatic representatives from all around the world. 
On the other hand, though, civil society on a global scale has been empathic to our cause, and they have been vital. And thanks to the Fridays for Future Activist Network, we have had the amazing opportunity to meet with young leaders from all around the world. However, in all of those instances, we've been always sharing our reports denouncing oil spills, illegal mining, the destruction of entire ecosystems all around Venezuela, and the threats and violations that Venezuelans, especially native populations, face on a daily basis to their human rights.